Good evening, viewers. You're watching to the point. I'm Preeti Chaudhary. Let's begin with the latest news break that is coming in. The Ahmadmi Party has made a sensational claim after what has gone down in Goa with the Congress practically getting wiped out with eight MLAs skipping to the BJP. Now, this claim by the Ahmadmi Party suggests that Operation Lotus is afoot in Punjab, or at least the Ahmadmi Party is accusing the BJP of that. The Ahmadmi Party has alleged 25 MLAs offered 25 crores each by the BJP. Moreover, the Ahmadmi Party says a deadline has also been given uh, of December 2022 to all the MLAs. All the MLAs who were allegedly approached by the BJP, the Ahmadmi Party says, have now gone and filed an FIR with the Punjab police. These are grave charges, uh, till now unsubstantiated by the Ahmadmi Party, coming at the back of what has gone down in Goa, where eight MLAs from the Congress has skipped over to the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, I am joined right now live by Raghav Chadda, Rajya Sabha MP, Ahmadbi Party. Uh, Mr. Chadda, appreciate you taking the time out and joining us. What has gone or happened in Goa at the back of that? These are very, very sensational charges that uh, Ahmadbi Party is laying, where even the Delhi CM tweeted saying Operation Lotus afoot right now in Punjab. Sensational but unsubstantiated till now, Mr. Chadda. Well, uh, yes, Operation Lotus has now reached Punjab, its next destination. And uh, certain members, senior members of the BJP, through their power brokers and agents, have got in touch with uh, more than 10 MLAs of the Aam Admi Party in Punjab with offers of 25 crore rupees each, promises of ministerial births as well as chairmanships in the Punjab government. And the mandate is you switch from Aam Admi Party to BJP. Help us bring down this government, this huge uh, majority in Punjab that the Aam Admi Party enjoys. And the deadline that these uh, brokers and these agents have given to uh, the MLAs of Aam Admi Party that they had contacted was the 31st of December 2022. So they have come with a precise plan and they wish to execute Operation Lotus. But the difference is, unlike Goa, Aam Admi Party MLAs aren't Congress's MLAs. Aam Admi Party's MLAs are true and loyal soldiers of Arvind Kejriwal and they shall never betray the mandate of the people or the trust that's been, you know, reposed in him by the party. Mr. Chadda, at this point of time, there will be many who will ask, where's the proof? Because let's go back to what happened in Delhi. You had Mr. Manish Sisodia who made again a sensational claim saying that there were attempts to poach MLAs in Delhi. There was an attempt to even poach him and that a senior leader had approached him. We never heard who the senior leader was. So you will be asked again, where is the proof? Well, <clears throat> The MLA group of the Aam Admi Party that was contacted by the BJP and, uh, you know, almost uh, sort of they, they were solicited to switch over, uh, went and met the uh, DGP of Punjab today. They have lodged a formal complaint and I'm told that an uh, that a FIR is also uh, uh, being registered on the complaint that's been given by the MLS, proper investigation will happen. And I think during the course of the investigation or subsequent to the investigation, all details of who called, how they called, what was the modus operandi, how was uh, money being offered, so on and so forth, will be out in the public domain. And it will be a subject matter of an independent investigation that will take place. In Punjab, we will certainly take it uh, to its, its, its logical conclusion. We will defeat all nefarious designs of the BJP to murder democracy in the state of Punjab. And let me tell you, there is a fundamental difference between the Congress and other parties' MLAs and the Aam Aadmi Party's MLAs. Operation Lotus may have been successful in Goa. Operation Lotus may have been successful in Karnataka, in Madhya Pradesh, in Arunachal Pradesh, and in several other states. But Operation Lotus will never be successful in a state where Aam Aadmi Party is in power, where Aam Aadmi Party has MLAs, simply because Aam Aadmi Party's MLAs are made up of a different kind of material and their loyalty is to the party and to the leader, Mr. Kejriwal. Why shouldn't you be charged with rhetoric right now, Mr. Chadda? Because the proof of the pudding is in its eating till the time there is proof that there were attempts to lure your MLAs on the table in public domain. Why should anyone believes you, believe you is what the BJP is saying. 
Look, we all of us today understand the modus operandi of the BJP. One is to offer money, to offer ministerial berths and lure the elected representatives. And those who refuse to get lured by all these, uh, you know, fancy offers are then, uh, you know, sort of taken in by the CBI and the ED. And these agencies of the state ha are unleashed on those elected representatives. So it's a it's a lethal combo of, uh, you know, these uh, uh, allurements and the fear of the agencies and similar something similar happened in Delhi when raids were conducted on our deputy chief minister, when cases were registered on our MLAs, our ministers, uh, so on and so forth. So I think Aam Aadmi Party is now fully prepared to deal with this onslaught of the BJP. Well, they have uh, power. They want to misuse their power. They want to abuse the state instrumentality. So be it. We will take it head on, unlike the Congress and unlike other political parties. But this whole thing uh, begs a bigger question. And the question is, where does BJP get all the money from? Let's, let's take the example of Punjab. In Punjab, in order to form a government, you need 60 MLAs. 60 MLAs. And they are offering 25 crore rupees to each of our MLAs. You can imagine the kind of money we're talking of, of, of uh, close to 16, 1700 crore rupees. So if they have this much amount of money, to dislodge a state government. Imagine the kind of money BJP has. Where is this money coming from? Where is this money parked? How can this money be in an in in in, in a such a uh, you know uh, brazen manner be distributed and MLAs be bought and sold? And where are these so-called independent agencies like CBI and ED? Uh, what are they doing? Isn't this a fit case of money laundering? Why aren't they going against these dealers and brokers of the BJP or against the? senior leadership of the BJP. I mean, these are big questions, important, pertinent questions that needs to be answered. Mr. Chadda, you talk about misuse of central agencies, but you know, where the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned, misuse of central agencies against you is what you allege is a witch hunt, but the use of central agencies on, say, other political outfits like the Congress is corruption. So you can't have it both ways there. But having said that, you know, I'm going to come back again, and I want to come back to the charge that you're talking about, that there is an attempt to buy out your MLAs in the state of Punjab by giving them 25 crore rupees each. Now, you know, these charges were made, these claims were made in Delhi as well. Why should anybody believe you is the question. Where is the proof? Uh, you know, who, do you have audio, visual evidence? So two things. One is I am doing this interview with you from Punjab. I have met all the MLAs. I have met my finance minister also who did the press conference today and I can tell you there is ample evidence that we have, including audio and video recordings. The details, the evidences, the contact details of the people who contacted, how were they contacted, etc. All will be given to the Punjab police and let the police conduct an independent investigation. We are not here to answer questions raised by the BJP. We are not answerable to the BJP or accountable to the BJP in any manner. Number one. Number two, as far as this question regarding proof is concerned, you got the proof early in the morning in the state of Goa. You have seen the proof in Arunachal Pradesh. You have seen the proof in Assam. You have seen the proof in Karnataka, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. The proof is before you. The proof is before the people. And therefore, I say that it is high time BJP gives up this lust for power, which is essentially making them blind and is making them murder democracy every single day. You know, Mr. Chadha, you say you're not the Congress. The Congress MLAs can be bought out. Uh, well, we don't know if they were bought out, but we've seen a defection of eight Congress MLAs uh, in Goa, going over, crossing over to the BJP. It was only yesterday that Arvind Kejriwal, while campaigning in Gujarat, made a sensational claim again, where uh, he said that the Congress is finished, it's dead, it's on its deathbed. Do you think it's a little forward, uh, you know, Mr. Chadha, coming at a point of time where the Aam Aadmi Party doesn't even have one Lok Sabha MP? Congress today is on the verge of death. Congress is over. I think voting for Congress is wasting one's vote. And while people of the Congress party are running a Congress Chodo Abhiyan, their leader is running a Bharat Jodo Abhiyan, and that essentially explains the dichotomy called the Congress that is there before you. I fundamentally believe that Congress doesn't possess what it takes to take on the well-oiled election machine called the Bharatiya Janata Party. If there is one party 
that can become the national and the natural replacement of the congress of the current opposition it is the aam aadmi party and therefore i say i see 2024 lok sabha as a bjp versus aam aadmi party as a modi versus kejriwal election well mr chadda thank you for joining us we'll only know what the contest in 2024 will look like when we get there but you say it's going to be a contest between the aam aadmi party and the bjp but the bjp asks you today to furbish proof if you're going to make a claim that there is an attempt to poach your mlas in punjab you've done it in delhi before uh, till now at least there has been no proof in the public domain that there was an attempt made having said that thank you for taking the time out and joining us uh, look forward to having you back uh, with that viewers i want to cut across right now to the other big development uh, that we've been tracking through the course of this morning and that was the defection of eight mlas eight mlas of the congress party in the state of gujarat they were there are 11 in all out of that eight are gone the congress virtually wiped out from the state of goa three images that define the current state of the congress image 1 eight out of the total 11 goa congress mlas have defected to the bjp the congress virtually wiped out from goa image 2 exactly 8 months ago in february these eight mlas plus three more took a pledge of loyalty at temples inside churches do not leave the congress the pledge did not even last 8 months while the dust settles on the goa congress implosion the congress marches on in kerala a big boost to the bjp and a massive setback to the congress the goa rebels include former chief minister digambar kamath and kalam good strong man michael lobo welcomed to the bjp by congress chief minister pramod savant मुझे लगता है कि फॉरेन टी शर्ट पहन के जो भारत जोड़ने के लिए निकले हैं तो यहां पे खुद होके लोग कांग्रेस छोड़ने के लिए निकले कांग्रेस छोड़ो आंदोलन जो बचे कुचे लोग थे वो भी कांग्रेस छोड़ने लगे हैं वो कांग्रेस छोड़ो आंदोलन गोवा से स्टार्ट हुआ है और पूरे देश भर में आगे बढ़ेगा और सभी लोग कांग्रेस छोड़ के बाकी भारतीय जनता पार्टी और अच्छी पार्टी है उनको ज्वाइन करेंगे माइकल रोबो हैड स्विच टू द कांग्रेस बिफोर द असेंबली इलेक्शन सेंग he was returning to the bjp to strengthen the hands of prime minister modi where honorable prime minister narendra modi's vision people have seen across india and the congress party says that we are going to bring the people together bharat jodo yatra but it is it is not true so bharat jodo yatra is going to be a failure and we have started from goa that is today ki congress chodo all the leaders are going to leave congress you will see in the days to come congress leaders stung by rebellion lashing out at the bjp labeling operation lotus as operation keecher while senior congress leaders like manish tiwari tweeted out an ominous warning of things to come the congress chodo jive made not just by the bjp but political parties like the aam aadmi party hoping to take the space ceded by the congress bhartiya janta party democracy ka serial killer hai ab unhe addiction hai vidhayak kharidne ka bechne ka todne ka in the 40 member goa assembly congress is now left with only 3 legislators while bjp has 28 mlas following the defection the upa now has just 4 mlas in goa while the nda has 33 seats well over the majority mark of 21 with this the congress all set to lose the lop status in goa assembly in two months two states go to elections the congress will fight not just the bjp but the aam aadmi party both in gujarat and himachal while the bjp and the aam aadmi party have hit the campaign trail with a vengeance the congress continues to march to its own tune bureau report india today
Many question viewers, uh, is the Congress in tune with ground realities? Does it really want to win elections, want to save uh, uh, its MLAs? Uh, that's the big question we're going to go forward with. The face-off between Charu Pragya, spokesperson Bharatiya Janata Party, Dr. Sharma Mohammad, spokesperson Congress. Uh, you know, Ms. Mohammad, the fact is, you might call it Operation Kichar, but you've been literally wiped out uh, uh, in Goa. You have uh, two states, ma'am, which are going into elections in the next two months, uh, and there are parties which are looking to cede your space. Is the Congress even interested in what's going on is the question. Preeti, um, I've been part of this Bharat Joro Yatra. I see a churning here. I, I am part of it. I've been in Kerala. I was in Tamil Nadu. And I see the reception. The people are giving Rahul Gandhi ji to the Congress party. And it's a huge churning. You have to understand, we were in power for 10 years. There were a lot of us with us. You know, there is a proverb, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So when <clears throat> we are out of power, for the last eight years, those who think that they just want to cling to power have left us. And it's good. Let, it, let us train the dirt, I, I, I feel. And let those with the Congress ideology stay back. See, you need to have an ideology to fight the fascist forces. So that is what is happening. Right? Those with the Congress ideology who wants to fight against the fascist forces are here. We are still fighting. I am here, or many of us are here. But those who want power are crossing across. They don't care about ideology. They, don't, they speak against the fascist forces, they speak against Modi, they speak against all the politics and his policies, what is happening, how he divides and divide and rule policy against minorities, against Dalits, all his, uh, whatever he's doing, using the ED, the income tax department, the CBI, against opposition. I believe anybody who's corrupt should go behind bars, but here it's only against the opposition. A simple question to the uh, lady sitting here, Charu Pragya. My question is, there was an FIR by uh, an MLA of the Congress party against Jharkhand MLA against Himanta Biswasa Sarma of buying the MLAs. He was told he'll be given 10 crore and Jay Mangal is the name of the MLA. He would be given, uh, made the health minister. Why isn't there a probe against Mr. Himanta Biswasa Sarma? We know that the Calcutta police came down to check on the businessman who gave the money, who is the in between between Hemanta Biswas Sarma and the MLAs who were caught with 50 lakh. My question today is why were, did the Delhi police stop the Calcutta police from even arresting this particular person? There was an arrest warrant. Why is he being protected? Why is Himanta Biswas Sarma not questioned today? This itself shows that there is money and muscle power happening. There, there is a, a policy by the Bhatia Janata Party to see to it that democracy is not sustaining in should not be sustained in this country so this is the actual truth okay. so we are very happy that those who want to go can go but those who will stick to the ideology will stay because there is a churning right now i can see my leader rahul gandhi taking us forward i am part of it and i see the churning you know i want to bring in charu pragya into this conversation but i will ask you you know if miss pragya allows me i want to ask uh, you one uh, you know question uh, miss uh, shama mohammed and the fact is it's all well and good to blame the bjp for buying out mlas the fact is you your very own party mlas are being bought over they are skipping happily to the bjp that if you if one is to believe that they are being bought over and that's so, a charge which is being laid by the opposition parties as well today the aam army party is mocking you and saying that uh, operation lotus if there is one can only succeed with the congress because our mlas are, uh, won't be bought over you know it's an embarrassment because eight months ago these very mlas were standing in queue behind rahul gandhi taking oaths in temples in churches to not defect it didn't even last eight months that is what I'm trying to say. Amadmi party is in how many states, if I'm not wrong? Two. They're a small party. They're a new party. Let's look at big parties. They just want one MLA in Goa, if I'm not wrong. What is Amadmi party? The way I heard Rahul Chadda, Ra Raghav Chadda speak right now, it's going to be Modi against, uh, what is his name, uh, Arvind Kejriwal. I still remember when Mr. Kejriwal said that the government schools in Delhi are very important. They are, they are the ones who are teaching students and they've given everything. But the same Arvind Kejriwal, Jival goes to Himachal and says, why are there so many government schools? Because children have nowhere to go. So, you know, the person who is not stable, who says one thing in one state and another thing in another, only what is the ideology of ARC? Can you tell me that? I would like to know. They don't have away from the place. ideology, as I bring so, in Charu Pragya, so, you know, the fact is away from the ideology. You say they have one MLA in uh, Goa. You only are left with three. Where does that leave you? And the fact is, in Gujarat, where Arvind Kejriwal goes every three days, 
you are right now marching in Kerala for 18 days straight, ma'am. So, you know, I'll come back to that question. Yes, Ms. Pragya, I want you to come in. And the charge that is laid today, not just by the Congress, but what we have seen in Goa by parties like the Aam Aadmi Party also is that you have the money and you are looking to buy out MLAs from whichever party possible, which is completely contradictory to democracy. Priti, I also want to add to uh, what uh, Shama has just said. She's saying Ahmad party is only in two states. It's a very small political party. I want to remind her that Congress today is also only in two states. And uh, in uh, major conflicts in both the states with the uh, internal leadership crisis, so I think uh, it will be wise for the Congress currently to not point any fingers. I'm no fan of Arvind Kejriwalji or the kind of politics he has, but Congress is not the one to speak about this currently. What is happening in Congress is that this party is choking its leaders. Now, whether there are tall leaders, they are young people on the ground, it's choking everybody and uh, forcing them to move out. And it's not just that every single uh, politician who's left the Congress has joined BJP. They have joined Samajwadi Party, they have joined TNC, they have joined Shiv Sena. And this exodus continues. I will not even call it an exit. It's an exodus. And all you have to do is read the resignation letters of all these leaders who have left the Congress Party. The place is clear. The Gandhis have outlived their political utility. The leadership uh, crisis is very much prevalent. Uh, leaders are saying that either Mr. Gandhi is not giving them time to meet. A national spokesperson can say this, then I can only shudder to imagine what a normal karikarta is feeling. People who served in this party for five decades are feeling out of place. And if Congress cannot accept that it's a problem, they're obviously not on their way to fix it. Because the first step towards fixing any problem is to admit that there is a problem. As for what happened in Goa, BJP didn't need to do anything. We were already in power. But if there are people from another political party who find themselves aligned to our ideology, finding themselves in a place uh, to serve their people better if they are with Bharatiya Janata Party, then that is fine. And uh, repeatedly this has happened. Congress leaders have said that for us to do better for our people, to be able to serve our people, to move beyond just looking for chicken sandwiches to serve to our top leadership, we have to change our party. Ms. Pragya, uh, may, I, may I come in? And can I I Question. Can I, can I yes, please finish. Finish. Take finish. Ten finish. more seconds. Yes, and you have also touched upon this, Priti, and I will say this again. Congress takes the way out by calling this the Bharat Jodo Yatra. They are not concerned about upcoming elections. We have seen that. Previously, how focused were they on, on Uttar Pradesh elections? They were not very much at all. And in this Yatra, also, they have completely left out the two states which are going for elections next. So, rather than looking for a place of convenience to continue your Yatra with, you should be focused okay. on areas where there are Ms. elections Pragya, may I, may and, I come in? and right. Yeah, yeah. May, I, may I come okay. in for a rebuttal? Sure, and you know, you sure, talk sure. about those with the similar ideology of the BJP has joined you. The man in question, and I will give you an example, Michael Lobo, before the Congress, uh, you know, before the elections in Goa, was on my show and he called the Bharatiya Janata Party when he quit the BJP to join the Congress as a fascist force. Today you have the same man back in your fold. What do you make of him and his ideology, man? Maybe he went and uh, checked out how grease the green the grass is on the other side. See, Piti, I, uh, I always say this. Congress, for all its uh, pomp today, uh, has proved itself to be a place where leaders are not happy. Whether it's a young person who's just joined Congress a little while back, who's worried about chicken sandwiches, or it is a very old person, whether it is even Captain Amrinder Singh Ji, who is uh, worried about the way Congress was in Punjab just before elections. They lost that election. We did too. So this is nothing to do with democracy. This is about a leader having the freedom to choose a place where he feels most comfortable. This Yatra has been riddled with controversies from the day it began. Are they even discussing issues of importance? Okay. Have you ever seen Mr. Gandhi take a mic in his hand and talk about the issues which are supposed to be for issues okay. for this yatra? Every day, issues which can be avoided are being discussed, but poor spokespersons are coming on national television doing their best to defend okay. Mr. Gandhi. All right. Okay. You know. Can I come uh, in? The, but yeah. When, yeah. Yes. Uh, you know the fact is, Ms. Pragya, I think ultimately one has to agree with that the MLAs, most of them, who have skipped ship. Are not about ideology, and you got it right. Where the grass is greener, it would seem like that. But Ms. Uh, Muhammad, I want to bring you in, and there is a you know fact on that. Those who actually follow the ideology of the Congress or whatever you might represent, you're still a political party. It's your business to win elections. It's your business to campaign in Gujarat. It's your business to save uh, you know the MLAs that are looking at defecting, and you seem to be not interested. Is the charge? 
Okay, so before I come to that, Pragya just said, you know, Rahul Gandhi does not have answers to many things. He just takes the mic and talks something. I just want to tell Pragya, the Prime Minister of India in eight years, the first Prime Minister in the history of India was not given a press conference. How dare! Yesterday there was violence. Police was beaten up by BJP workers in Kolkata. What did, you, what, what did the Home Minister say? Did the Prime Minister of India comment on it? The policeman was beaten by BJP gundas in Kolkata. What has happened? Why is the Prime Minister quiet? Why hasn't Amit Shah not condemned it? Because they believe that their people can beat up police. This is the sort of law of land what the Amit, Amit, Amit Shah follows. Number two, she says morale of the Congress workers. What about the morale of the BJP workers when Subindu Adhikari of the TMC is just taken over and made the leader of opposition in by the Bhatia Janta But Party. you know, there are lots of examples. That. There are lots of examples. Nana Patole, ma'am. Lots no. of examples. Let's not go no. there. There are a lot no. of... There are no. lot, no. But no. I just you want to come to that no. question no. and I need to go into no. a break. But no. I'll come back no. to the question, ma'am. No. The I'm question is... is those people what who still Nana report Pacheca state... was with the Congress party and... Madam, he, he was also right. elevated. Let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. 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 He finish. comes... He comes into the Congress when the Congress is not in power. The BJP is in power. He's moved from the okay. BJP, which is in power, and come to All us. Right. I need to close that. the bulletin, madam. That I will means, once again ask that you that question. Ma'am, with your permission. To, you're not letting me speak, Preeti. Ma'am, finish. Okay, to, then you don't... That yeah, means go, he wants to fight the fascist forces. That is the most important okay. point about Nana, Nana Patole. Not that we are in power. He's come to us because he's fed up of what is happening okay. in the Bhatia Janta Party. Man, you now, know... Okay, I just want to ask you before I close the bulletin. Okay, I just want to ask you one question. I'll give you 10 seconds each. Uh, Ms. Mohammed, those who still repose the faith in your party or a political outfit, it's your business to fight and win elections, ma'am. Yes, of course we are doing that. How do you know we are not working in Gujarat? Of course okay. we will be there in Gujarat. We are doing a lot of groundwork in Gujarat. There's the general secretary in charge, many leaders who are attached okay. to Gujarat. You have no idea what we are doing from the booth level onwards, okay. from the mandal level in Gujarat. Ma'am, we can't see it. What we see, is, what we see is the march right now in Kerala. Important. And I have been in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Okay. I have seen, I have May been with Rahulji at a tea shop where they were right. telling us that okay. the, the, the gas price Commercial right. gas price has gone from 800 I want to give 10 to seconds to Charu Pragya and, and want to quickly close difficult. the show. Charu Pragya, 10 seconds, Madam, closing uh, comments and I want to go into a break. I always find Congress leaders to be living in the middle of their illusions and hallucinations. Uh, that seems to be the case for Shama when it comes to Gujarat elections. Because if they were so keen on Gujarat, Mr. Gandhi could have spent ek din, push din to Guzaro Gujarat. Mein. Okay. All right. With that, ladies, appreciate you taking the time out and joining us uh, this evening. Thank you there. We are hoping to come back uh, again because uh, this is a debate which is not going to end. The Bharat Jodo Yatra is going to continue uh, for days on end. Uh, whether the Congress has its priorities right, it's a question we leave it for our viewers to decide. Uh, but right now, big blow to the Congress. They've lost eight MLAs in the state of Gujarat, bringing them down now to just three MLAs in Gujarat, virtually wiped out the Congress there.